Hello everyone, welcome to BKGFSA Services and today we are going to discuss about next video of my channel and we have started a part of PRPs which is uh, part of FSSC 22000 so let's start what is PRP PRPs are the basic requirements that we need to make sure food safety throughout the food supply chain this is called PRPs in today we are going to discuss about the PRP number 8 which is equipment suitability cleaning and maintenance clause number 8 includes sub 6 sub clauses which we will going to discuss one by one 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 is general requirements so i described in previous prps as well here i'm going to repeat myself the 8.1 usually that called general requirements is you can uh, define it as like it's a summary of all other clauses which will come after this if you I comply with these requirements like 8.2, 8.3, 8.4 and so on then you are automatically compliant with 8.1 so here you need to do nothing concretely but first we will discuss others and then we will come back to this so the 8.2 is hygienic design so here they have mentioned three uh, in three points so but I am not going to describe or read here the points rather I have prepared a slide so here are the hygienic design and what are the recommendations so first picture is showing you that the drain should be at the bottom level so it can drain all the material from the silos this is called hygienic because if you are going to have a silo like this and the drainage on slightly above that means some remain from previous patch will be remain as it is in the silo and in later stage it can be cause food safety issues second is if you see here it's a belt here they described it how it should be so there should not be any gap if you see it slightly above means there can be possibility of debris or something so if you're going to uh, merge two points you need to make sure that it has no gaps otherwise does debris or maybe a food can be accumulate on this points and later on it can be cause of food safety issues and third is it's the regarding the it can be wall and can be equipment as well so you need to avoid these corners rather these corners should be rounded because in this way the dirt will not going to accumulate in the corners and you can easily clean it and in this point usually at that level uh, it's very hard to remove the dirt and you need to make more efforts so avoid such kind of uh, surfaces and go with this curved uh, rounded edges then the next is about regarding the gasket so if you see here this is like a this u shape chances that food will come here and accumulate here and it can be a good source for the microbial activities or it can be pest as well to make sure that the side toward the food or the processing line should be straight so nothing should accumulate and the cleaning is easier then e is the just the surfaces so uh, usually you can have these examples like working tables so their edges should not be like completely rounded toward end it should have open ends like this so there should not be any accumulation because if you're going to choose this style maybe it looks good but it the, at the end you are unable to clean from the inside and then last is about the nuts and bolts so it's very common that we use nuts and bolts for some time temporary or sometimes it's the it's part of machines so you have to make sure that the nuts should not give space uh, for the food now the next clause clause is 8.3 which is product contact surfaces and what you need to do again it's kind of repetition of previous one but here you mainly product contact surfaces first what we what uh, auditor asked that they ask is it food contact complying with food contact regulation and for this you need to present them a certificate which we usually call food contact surfaces complying with food contact surfaces second point is the repetition of the previous one like round corners then third is uh, stainless steel like if we have rust or any such kind of damages or corrosion in the facility that means it, it is not complying with this clause if you are using uh, iron structures uh, in the machines which directly come into contact with the food so this can be a, an issue so you need to avoid it so for this the recommended surfaces are stainless steel materials then should be durable so durable is a very interesting word because durable mean 
which is complying with the food safety clauses like stainless steel and should be durable like and we can use it for a longer period of time without causing any kind of damages then the last one is you do not the wooden material is not allowed if you really see the auditor usually asked to have a plastic pallets because from the wood there are chances that uh, the threads or shreds of the wood can get into mix with the material so especially in the processing area you are not allowed to use plastic uh, sorry wooden pallets you have to use the wooden so this is only the wooden but there are some other equipments as well that you cannot use which are made of wood the handles of knives so you cannot use them in your facility it should be handle or should not be with wooden if they are it's a non-compliance again because wood absorb the materials as well and it can be a good place for the microbial they are not visible but they grow on such things now the next is 8.4 which is temperature control monitoring equipment so here what will be the focus the temperature equipments usually here in this clause first they will ask if the temperature control environment so there's must be gauges temperature gauges which shows the temperature all the time like what is the temperature inside the mixture suppose and then on top of that how you are monitoring it one is gauge which is the uh, showing monitoring or temperature of the equipment and the on top of that we usually use temperature probe we call it also thermometer these should be available first of all and then complying with the uh, food contact regulations then it should be calibrated and there must be record like you need to have a stickers or calibration record for these devices this clause they will ask you such questions so you it should be available then clause 8.5 is cleaning plant utensils and equipment to apply with this clause you need to have a monitoring plan cleaning plan and the monitoring sheet here i will describe you how to make a cleaning plan or cleaning schedule you need to have these five points like area or equipment then you need to define the frequency like how many times you are going to clean like floor or the fans ceilings and then the equipment themselves then how are you going to clean them and then who is going to clean it and who is responsible to verify like the cleaning is really done or not so for example the floor so here you need to clean daily it's a very uh, usual thing sometimes in facilities you have to do it shift wise you can mention here shift wise as well instead of daily but if daily is working it's fine then how are you going to clean it so here you need to describe the method i just mentioned a general method like first you do dry cleaning with dry mop and then you do the wet cleaning with wet mops by using approved chemicals chemical service provider is usually recommend that this is the dose so it should be also on the bottle itself so who will the responsible really floors are cleaned by area cleaner or sweeper and verified by sometimes it can be a uh, shift in charge sometimes can also be a QA person so this is how you need to make a clean plan so you need to add all the things uh, in this list like floor roofs then you can uh, add equipments then machines knives all add all them and then define here everything so this is called cleaning cleaning schedule and plan so according to that plan auditor will verify the cleaning once you prepare the cleaning plan or schedule you what you will do just copy this area like area equipment and frequency and paste it another sheet area and what are you going to do then make a monthly and the weekly is easier because you can print them in one sheet but if you are using computers then you can you can make for whole month so for the monitoring you need to copy paste same what you have mentioned in the cleaning plan then you need to here check like monday the floor is clean yes who is check you can mention tick or signature a small signature initiatives that you can use to mention here but the tick and cross i would say fine but in the check is kind of monitoring or verification so you need to mention uh, the signatures of the verifier like it can be area in charge shift in charge or maybe a qa uh, person who is on the duty so this need to be filled so this is about the cleaning plan once you are complying with this then that means you are covering this clause now the 8.6 clause is preventive and corrective maintenance so there are so many points in here so i'm not going to describe or read them one by one instead i will show you the examples but i will recommend you must read it 
so there should be no temporary fixture like there is a leakage in the uh, tabs and what usually maintenance manager do they apply a tape a kind of tape or adhesives to uh, temporary fixtures so if a auditor is going to observe it during the audit that means it's a non-compliant minor but it is non-compliant and depend on the uh, area as well and secondly the lubricants we use it's it's almost must have that we usually use the lubricants in the facility to lubricate the machines so it should be food graded and auditor can ask you for grade certificate so it should be available it's very necessary when there is whenever there is a like the area person has complained that there is a leakage in the tab so when the maintenance worker came he you need to paste a notice that like it's under work do not come or something and then once you clean you need to once the maintenance is done you need to sanitize and clean up required then the next point is you must have a preventive maintenance plan this plan usually available with the maintenance team so to uh, to prepare a preventive maintenance plan you need to mention all the tasks then frequency for example if you have uh, oven so what is the maintenance plan how are you going to do this they need to uh, define everything and then estimated time and then completion list this is the preventive maintenance plan the uh, next thing auditor can ask like he can check how many requests were raised for the maintenance work so in that case when you need to report like there is a leakage in tab in uh, mixing area for example then you need to use a kind of paper it's very from company to company but i will suggest you can use this as well or if there is any like there are some time pre-printed books as well that we use to call it memo or maintenance request something so you can use them as well there's no harm in it so uh, the area in charge filled it and send it to maintenance worker and on this once the uh, things are done the maintenance personnel will fill it and so the last so i just summarized the whole this point like you can consider the uh, summary so main points to implement to uh, comply with this clause you need to have calibration of equipment then calibration certificate should be available then cleaning schedule as i discussed and checklist which i call monitoring sheet then list of temperature and equipments using in the area and devices and their numbering and calibration then you need to have a preventive maintenance plan and you then you need to have a preventive maintenance plan then maintenance request form it's also required then food grade certificate of lubricants and all the chemicals that you are using in the area then there should not be no temporary maintenance and issues should be fixed permanently so with this i would if you have any question you can mention in the comments and next time i will come with the next prps thank you